supply and demand can solve any problem in the world. Or at least economists think so. Most people believe that they understand the basic idea of supply and demand. Suppliers supply, buyers demand, what's not to understand? But the truth is, most people don't understand, don't truly understand supply and demand. And that will be fine, that will be fine, but when politicians and journalists and pundits, you know pundits, pundits are those who know nothing but have an opinion on everything. So when politicians and journalists and pundits talk about supply and demand while having no clue what supply and demand are, their opinions are wrong, their articles are wrong, their news is fake news. Housing demand far exceeds supply. There is a mistake right in the headline. From Financial Times, US crude tumbles as supply overwhelms demand. Another mistake. But we are not pundits. We are going to learn supply and demand the proper way. Let's start with a simple one. Demand. Demand is simpler because it's about us. Buyers, shoppers, consumers. And the demand shows how much we buy at different prices. Imagine, Apple releases a new outrageously expensive iPhone. We, consumers, buy fewer phones. Or imagine, there is a Christmas sale and we flock to the stores to buy everything. The price goes up, we buy less. The price falls, we buy more. That's the demand. Demand is the relationship between price and how much we buy. And how much we buy at a certain price is called quantity demand. Jack bought a cup of coffee at $2. The quantity of one cup of coffee is a quantity demanded. Therefore, the demand is the relationship between price and quantity demanded. Supply and demand. It's all about graphs. So how do we show graphically demand and quantity demanded? We put the price on a vertical axis We put quantity on a horizontal axis And the demand will be the entire curve And the quantity demanded will be a number If you pick the price, let's say you pick this price, you go to the right, you hit the demand, and then you get the quantity demanded. Quantity demanded, it's a number. How much buyers buy at a certain price. And the demand is the entire Curve. The demand is the relationship between prices and quantities demanded. Suppose you pick a high price. Let's say this is the high price. And for high price, you get this quantity. Quantity demanded one. And suppose you pick a low price. And then you get this quantity demanded. You go to the right, you hit the demand curve, and you get quantity demanded two. So what does it mean? It means that if price goes up, for example, from low, low price to high price, then quantity demanded falls. 
from Q2 to Q1. And other way around, if price goes down, quantity demanded goes up. And that's why demand is a downward sloping curve. Let's discuss supply. Supply is about sellers, producers, companies, factories. Supply is about production. Supply is the relationship between price and how much sellers want to sell. And how much sellers want to sell at a particular price is called quantity supplied. A pharmacy sold a thousand face masks, two dollars each. That's quantity supplied. Therefore, supply is the relationship between price and quantity supplied. Let us show the supply, the supply curve on a graph. Price, quantity, and the supply curve will look like this. And it means that supply is the relationship between price and quantity. For example, if you pick low price, low price, you will get low quantity. Quantity supplied one. And if you pick high price, you will get high quantity. Which means that if price rises, quantity supplied also rises. And if the price falls, quantity supplied also falls. Which means that supply is an upward sloping function. Supply slopes upward. When you solve exercises, some exercises will make you move along the demand curve. When you move a dot along the demand curve. And other exercises will make you shift the entire demand curve to the right or to the left. Every time the price changes, you move along the curve. You move along the demand curve. For example, consider coffee. And suppose Starbucks raises the price. Starbucks raises the price. On a demand curve, it can be shown as a movement along the curve. If Starbucks raises the price, they move along the demand curve from low price to a high price. But if something else changes, something other than the price, something that affects buyers, then you will need to shift the entire demand curve. For example, suppose price of tea falls. So tea is less expensive. What will happen to the demand for coffee? What will happen to the demand for coffee? Tea and coffee are substitutes. We can replace one by the other. So if price for tea falls, tea is cheaper, which means that people will buy more tea, which means that if people buy more tea, they will buy less coffee. So demand for coffee will fall. Demand 
will shift to the left. Let's discuss the supply. Again, if the price changes, you move along the curve. For example, for example, retail prices for coffee go up. Then suppliers will be happy. They will be happy to see that. They will be more willing to sell more expensive coffee. So on the supply curve, suppliers will move along the curve up. But if something else changes, something other than the price, something that affects sellers, then you might want to shift the entire supply curve. For example, wages of coffee, beans, pickers fall. Wages affect supply because wages affect labor costs. Coffee producers will be happy to see this event because they will pay smaller wages, they will earn bigger profits. So suppliers, producers will be happy to see falling wages and they will be willing to provide more so supply will shift to the right. Supply will increase, it will shift to the right. Now, let's discuss the article I showed you at the beginning of this video. Remember this article? And this one? Journalists tell us that supply overwhelms demand or demand far exceeds supply. But now you know that supply goes upward and demand goes downward. How is it even possible that an upward sloping curve overwhelms a downward sloping curve? It's a mathematical nonsense. And it's a grammatical nonsense too. We have studied supply and demand. Supply, it's about sellers. And it's about sellers. And demand, it's about buyers. Supply slopes upward, demand go slopes downward. They have to intersect. And when they do intersect, when they do intersect, we have a market equilibrium. This point is called equilibrium. And this equilibrium has equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. And what is so special about the equilibrium price is it's the only price at which quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. the market equilibrium. The idea is simple in terms of mathematics. Mathematically, demand goes down, supply goes up, they have to intersect, and when they intersect, the intersection is the equilibrium, the equilibrium that has equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. What does it all mean? What does it mean? that at the equilibrium price, quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. The equilibrium price 
it's that magical price that makes everything better. The equilibrium price, it's that unique price at which everything buyers want to buy, they do. And everything sellers want to sell, they do. Buyers and sellers meet each other at the equilibrium. There is no shortage, no surplus, the market clears. And that was supply and demand. Thank you.